Hello travelers! Oh my gosh, this video feels really weird to film because I'm so used to having like a script or, you know, an idea of what the heck we're going to talk about. But yeah, today, exactly. it's just kind of like... We're it, improvising a little bit. Yeah, you've submitted your questions to us. That's right. We're taking down the fourth wall and uh, we're going to have a little chit chat. We got our drinks, cheers. Our second coffee of the day, both oh, of yeah. us. First of all, I want to thank you, every one of you, you guys that submitted questions and also that they are interested in right now they're watching their video. We've had so many questions that we actually are going to make two parts to yes, this video. Yes, yes. Uh, we we're trying to decide like how to split it up and, and what do we come up with? We come up with right now it's going to be regular questions and then the second video is going to be a little bit more related into US, Mexico questions. Yeah. And um, I think it's going to be fun. Yeah, I'm excited. So I submitted our first question. All right. My question is, what's new? I feel like you guys see us every single freaking week, but in reality, it's been so long since Martine and I have gotten a chance to talk with you. But, but let's go back to the beginning of the year. What did we do? We did something crazy. We did a series over there in the southeast of Mexico that required us to uh, work every single day, uh, record in the mornings or in the evenings and every single weekend. But it actually goes a little bit further back than Southeast Mexico. I think you're forgetting you blacked out for the first part. We had Riviera Maya, then we had like Georgia, uh -huh. Cruz, Miami, then South. That was just the end. That's right, that's right. But it's true. We were working, we had this genius idea because Martina and I work full time outside of YouTube. We're like, let's just cram all the filming for the whole year in the beginning months it'll be really efficient um but it was probably the stupidest idea we've ever had we made some of the best videos we've ever made in our entire lives but we were bored now we were really burnt out so burnt out. once we got home in april we had like how many months several months of no like filming three. Yeah, we would do things like in California, which you guys may or may not have seen by now. I don't know what our schedule is like, but besides that, we pretty much weren't filming. And it was actually really nice, that part, to have so much time to just like rest. Yeah, and also whenever we have, uh, we discover whenever we have uh, some time between video and video, we get more creative. Mm -hmm. And um, it's, it's, it's our own fault. We did it. We learned from it, we're not going to do it again. Yeah, okay. it, but it was actually really strategic and smart that we did film that way because something happened in April that we never told you guys. Oh yeah, um, we're going to go there. <laughs> I was laid off from my last job, but it was a good thing because I wasn't enjoying what I was doing over there in that company. And uh, so it took me like two months or something to um, find a new job, you know, interviews, like the whole Why? process, applying, it was, yeah. but then I found the perfect job. Right now, I'm very happy. I work two weeks in this beautiful, beautiful job that I really appreciate, and it makes me so happy to be in this new company that they treat you like a person. Yeah, so exactly. <laughs> I've never seen him so happy at a company. Uh, anybody who works customer service knows how hard it is to kind of get out of that customer service cycle of, of you know, moving up. Mm -hmm. um, but Martin's managed to find a, a company that really gave him a chance. Um, so you're focusing way more on customer success now, that which is, is really great and exciting. That That is what is new with me. Yeah. But with you. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that look. Um, well, my updates aren't as exciting. I'm really in. <laughs> I'm really into slime, you guys. Breaking the fourth wall here. Yeah. This is just two of the five slimes I've bought in the past month. Um, I was on Slime Talk and I got really into that. So. Spending all my fun money on that. I'm wondering if we're gonna say how much we <laughs> spend on our fun money about that, but... <laughs> it's fun money for a reason. Yes. The other big project was getting this film room set up. I hope you guys like it. Uh, we made it just for you. If you this, like it, put it in the comments, please. This is from Etsy. My favorite part, and I don't know if you guys can see on camera, is this candle. Anthony Bourdain. I love, love it. We love him. I love it. Other than that, it's just editing and getting excited for some trips. But anyway, enough rambling. 
probably lost half of you guys already. But let's just jump into the next question. Sounds good. Look who asked it. Eight pilot travel, or good friends yes. that we met in Oaxaca. The question is, how in the heck do you have time for two full-time jobs and two YouTube channels? I ask myself that every single freaking day. Um, <laughs> it gets really intimidating thinking in the future of like, wow, I we have to come up with more videos and we have to keep doing this. But you can't think too far ahead. You have to just take it literally one week at a time. Yeah, I think uh, most of the time it uh, requires a lot of planning. I know it's a Thursday whenever uh, we do voiceovers. And if we don't do voiceovers, I said like, this is not a Thursday. Normally we wake up around six o'clock and we start working for, for our, job, real jobs. Yeah, our real jobs. Yeah. And then, then around three or four, it could be working on editing, it could be working on uh, translating uh, voiceover, depending on the state. It could be um, editing, it could be uh, photos, good, photos. it could be a couple of things. Subtitles. Uh, yeah, and also discussing between us yeah. uh, how it's going to be the thumbnail, how it's going to be, what's the best um, title. Weekends are for filming, unless we're traveling somewhere where the time zone works with our work schedule, right. in which case we would film in the morning. Sometimes on weekdays we try not to do that too much. Yeah. It sounds insane and it is crazy and there are some weeks where we don't have anything to do with YouTube and we get so bored. Well, I get so <laughs> bored. We've gotten so used to just the grind and the hustle that I can't imagine That's life right. without right. this. Right. It's like, you just do it. Yeah. And also, some of you guys just message us on Instagram. It's like, hey, Martin, you guys are in Veracruz. It's like, uh, no, we recorded that like yeah. four months ago. It's because we're working two full-time jobs that we have to do that. We have ahead to record time, yeah. ahead of time and we have to work on that yeah. and the editing stuff and that's why we uh, sometimes we publish yeah. our, our, our um, experiences yeah. in different states a little bit later yeah it feels a lot less stressful if we have kind of a buffer of a right, few right. weeks right. and uh, the other thing is, is like we get asked all the time like well will you guys ever do YouTube full-time and like quit your jobs and here's the funny thing is like I I don't want to quit my job I don't think you want to quit your job. We're very career- I wanted to quit the last one. You did my last one, but- And this one, <laughs> so, I love it. I love yeah, it. Yeah, we're very career driven. We find a lot of satisfaction in doing our career and we work extremely hard to get to this point where we can work and do videos for you guys. Mm -hmm. You can think that, okay, they're YouTubers, they earn a lot of money, and it's not the case. It's, uh, most of the times, whenever we are uh, film a video, we spend a lot in flights, in transportation. So there's a lot of things that we spend on that sometimes we don't have it back, exactly. but it's all right because we love We love travel. it. Our Patreon members know because we share monthly income reports right. that most months we break even, if not be in the negative. So it's cool because YouTube just, it's pretty much at this point where it like kind of supplements our desire to travel, but this, we can't live off of it. That's we, right. We gotta work. All right, next question. We're trying to be a little bit faster now. Yeah, we're yeah. talking too much, and uh, if you haven't already, maybe just listen to this kind of like as a podcast. And <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> we're rambling, but it's because we want we don't get to go off script much. Would your younger self love what you're doing right now? Thank you, Eliana, for the question. I think my younger self couldn't have possibly even dreamed up the life we're living now. I did pageants, you guys know this. Um, there's like this portion where you have to say what you want to be when you grow up. Yeah, I, I, sorry to interrupt you. I married a uh, former Miss California. Oh, stop. Anyway, Just there's saying. this portion where they ask like what you want to be when you grow up. And I remember for a few years, I was saying like, I want to be on the travel channel. Like I want to be the next Samantha Brown. And like, I didn't really even know that like this, this world existed back then and it's weird because it's kind of like I, I've become that you know alongside you my husband like like I remember when we start when we you didn't even exist in my life when I started this channel when I started this channel I thought I was gonna have to do it on my own for like my life and I thought I just have to find someone who tolerates it and then there's you and you like Wow, you took it to the next level with me. You, Appreciate you, that. when I had less than a thousand subscribers, he thought I was a star. You were a star. <laughs> and uh, we've ended up just being able to travel to so many places. Young herself would be shocked that she found a remote job. She gets to travel. She has 
you know, this some she makes videos and people watch them. And, and they're she's inspired. Doing it all for you. And they're inspired and then they travel to that place. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I feel like I'm living the dream. I feel like I don't know um, how life could get much better. What about you? That was such a great answer. Sorry, right? I have a little passion <laughs> to you there. For me it's gonna be the same. I think well at the time I didn't knew how was it to be uh, I didn't knew what was a remote work. I didn't knew you can do that. I didn't knew I will have such an amazing wife who um, will always wants to travel and always uh, encourage me to follow my dreams. Jonger Martin, you will be so proud that uh, actually I was showing Juliana totally like something, something about that, like my dreams in 2012 or 2013. Yeah, he found a mood board he made. And oh my God, like everything is getting into the place everything came true except there's a photo though of abs um, on your dream board you're almost there almost there <laughs> <laughs> maybe a little bit less on and you'll be good that's right that's right I, i'm a huge believer in dreaming big so if you're watching this and you have some crazy idea that you know is your dream don't give up on it even if it takes 10 years on youtube to get there like <laughs> don't give up with hard work and perseverance and most importantly resilience you can do everything resilience is one of the most important qualities to have and i feel like um, our resilience has, has given us everything has given us the world. that's true that's true would high school juliana and martin date martin and i it's so crazy how we could be from two different worlds yet have such parallel lives mm -hmm. um I think for sure we would have dated. Okay. Yeah, probably. But that would have been a good idea. Before I met Juliana, I think I wasn't ready for her. I met Juliana at the right time. What's your go-to in and out order? Cheeseburger. I think Juliana will be without onion, and mm -hmm. for me it will be without sauce and onion. Yeah. And then we split some uh, fries. Fries, yeah. Sometimes I like to get animal style fries, sometimes not. Depends on if I'm getting a milkshake. You know, I like to dip my fries in my milkshake and that wouldn't make sense with animal fries. Wandering words. How long does it take to edit a video on average? They're so well done, so I'd imagine they take a while. Oh, thank you. That's really sweet. I want to count everything into this mm -hmm. in terms of like adding subtitles, mm -hmm. thumbnails, upload, everything. Mm -hmm. I would say anywhere from 15 to 20 hours a week. Um, that doesn't include filming. Yeah, yeah. And also, Remember that we do videos in English and Spanish. Sure. But that includes, that includes yeah, Spanish exactly. Ones. But most of the time, we always say the same things in English and Spanish. So yeah. we just have to change it. We have the B-roll. Yeah. Okay. Next question. We had a few people ask this. Just the summary is: Are children in your future? If you had them, would you pause this type of work for a while and then potentially include them when you get older? How would travel change after kids? Oh gosh, what's our answer for this today, Martine? So it's not that we are against kids or something like that, but it's like right now we are a lifestyle. It it would completely change yeah. if we have kids. We don't know if we're ready. Yeah, yes. I I don't know. Right now I lean more just towards not having kids, just because like I put ten years almost of my life into YouTube, and if we were to have kids, that would really sorry, no offense, it would kind of screw up everything that we've worked for. It's not to say that you can't film and have kids, it's just that the way that I see us wanting to do that, mm -hmm. it, we can't have kids, it's not fair. And, we, and if, in case we have kids, we want to be very good parents. Exactly. So, um, exactly. we are very dedicated at everything that we do. So in case we have kids, we're going to be very dedicated to them. The truth is that like, if we were to have kids, there's no way we could do YouTube and work. There's just, we do not have enough yeah, hours have in the day. One. And uh, YouTube is our baby. Like it is, you guys are our children. <laughs> we love you And guys. Um, you know, you always think about the future and like when we're old and we're not doing YouTube anymore, sure, it'd be nice to have kids, but gosh, it's just, it's hard with the timing of everything. Cause like, I don't know. I feel like we haven't hit our prime yet on YouTube. I feel like we're just getting We're started. getting there like right so, now. And Honestly, our last videos, Juliana, I think they're like... Yeah, some of the best we've ever made. This is a work of art, yeah. you know? Like, yeah. So we have a lot of goals we want to reach before we could even consider that. Also, keep in mind, not everyone can nor wants to have kids, so... I'm just gonna let that out there. Oh my god, I love this one. What are three things you love and hate about each other? Go for it. Okay, three things I... I'll start with the hate. Juliana, choose violence today. 
Uh, okay, things I hate. Number one, you make so many sounds. <laughs> Martin is a man of a thousand sounds. He's constantly clearing Since his throat. Up. He's constantly burping. He's constantly, like every sound you could think of. Number two, shoot, that was pretty much it. <laughs> well, come on, it has to be something. Martin is obsessed with shopping specifically for jerseys. This entire closet has almost become overrun hey. by jerseys. And just like soccer in general, like his schedule is controlled by the Puma's schedule. And so sometimes that like puts a damper in our filming because it's like, wow, like we can see this once in a lifetime event at 12 p.m. Oh no, Puma's plays at that time. Guess we're gonna have to miss it. <laughs> Number three is that Martine cannot be held accountable for anything that someone says before he finishes coffee. And unfortunately for me, I'm a morning person, and so most of the time my brilliant ideas I want to share happen before his coffee has been absorbed into his bloodstream. And yeah. so when Richard tells something and I haven't finished my first coffee, she has to repeat it. Later on, or, or, or like we just like, oh, I told you that, yep, didn't happen. Didn't happen. It was before the coffee, and it didn't happen. But now on to the things I love, and there's so many that it's hard to come up with three, so I'll just say what comes to my mind. Number one, I love our little world that we've made of like, our own little language, because jokes. we kind of jokes, and like if you guys were to watch us, just like interacting you guys would be like what on earth are they even talking about we have there's so many layers to our jokes and yeah. our little the way we talk yeah. and, and like it we've made this beautiful world of like that's just such a colorful world yeah. of two cultures blending together it's just the most beautiful thing like <laughs> i can't because, imagine yeah because it could be it could be it could be in spanish or in english yeah. and it's 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 beautiful. It's just this beautiful, colorful world that you and I live in that you've made for me, and and, and I can't imagine being with someone not from a completely different area of the world. It's just amazing. Oh, number two, uh, I love that you're a dreamer like me. I love our evenings on our patio when you and I just talk about. We sound probably like we are are straight off of an after school program on Disney just talking <laughs> about just talking about lessons we've learned and, and dreams and, and oh my gosh we're killing it and just I just love dreaming with you and I love I just love I love that. I think that's the diary that we have in our life, Elena, that we're dreamers and we always talk about that and that makes us happy. Yeah. And then number three you're so loyal. You're so so loyal, and this is the thing that like when like at first you were so obsessed with Pumas, and this is why I brought up Pumas earlier. It's like yeah, he's really obsessed with Pumas, and that rules his life. But like that speaks a lot for who Martin is as a person. Incredibly loyal to anybody who is lucky enough to be his friend or family. He will ride or die for you, just like he does for his Pumas. Just like he watches them, he sees them lose, and he still loves them and cheers them on, and that just speaks to who he is as a person. And I'm shaking because I'm just so in love with you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the first one, it will be, I'm not a morning person. I'm trying to be, but in the morning, um, that you talk a lot, and that, that matches what you say about like the, 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 the first coffee. Second, it will be, that if I have a day that I want to just relax and have like maybe three slash four hours of doing nothing, you have to do something. Yeah, hyperactive. Yes. As, as the doctors say. <laughs> <laughs> the third thing, it will be that you use your voice in funny ways. I'm gonna explain, I'm gonna explain myself. No. Whenever she doesn't have to be loud, she's very loud and she I have to make it. And whenever she wants to tell a secret, she's like, <laughs> I cannot hear you. Like, I cannot hear you, literally, I cannot hear you. No. And then she gets mad <laughs> about that I cannot hear her. So it's it's like that. So she uses her voice in different ways. I think it's to make up for the fact I'm so loud normally that I like, don't want someone to hear me. So. <laughs> and uh, three things that I love about you, I have so many, Elena. I love you so, so much. But I will, if I have to say three, it will be how much effort you put in every single thing that you do in this life. Doesn't matter if it's just editing a video or talking to your mom 
or uh, making some food like you put special effort and love in every single thing that you do second that you love me so much you make me feel so 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 loved third point is one that it came also with the things that i hate that you always have to do something but it's a good way because um sometimes you uh teach me to always do something so i always have to be on top of my game uh, in order to be the best person that I could be and you I think you helped me to be the best version of Martin that I could be Aww, I love you, I love you mm -hmm. too Aww, so cute um, next question do you prefer English videos or the Spanish videos and why obviously for me I prefer the English ones because when I'm editing, the English one is what I edit first because it's my native language. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I have a hard time with the Spanish videos because um, it's hard to like host something and it's hard to do that when it's not your native language and it's hard for me to really show my personality more. Mm -hmm. And the Spanish ones are crack jokes because I get really stuck on like the vocabulary. I think it will depend on the state because we also, I really enjoy whenever we're visiting uh, one place in Mexico and I want to see your reactions. Yeah. So I really enjoy that, but also you're right, to be a host in a different language uh, yeah. that is not your first language, it's challenging. Yeah, it's definitely just like my own thing, like with my own little language block. It has nothing to do with like who we're making the video That's for. Right. Love both audiences greatly and deeply, and I love both countries we travel in deeply and greatly. It's just, you know, it's hard to speak another language. It's from Matt Nav Travel. If you could fly any airline out there, who'd it be? Where'd you go? And in what class? Emirates. First class. Dubai to Tokyo. Or vice versa. That would be the real dream. I like that. If you guys use points to travel sometimes, I'd love to hear more on that. For example, it's still confusing to me when points are transferred to get the best deals. Mm. Matt Neff. <laughs> um, he is our friend. Met yep. him at like a YouTube camping trip many years ago. And uh, he's taught me everything I know about points, so everything I'm gonna say is completely credited to him. Um, but one tool that he taught me about that I've told all my friends and family about that I think is really great for getting into beginner point hacking is points.me. Built, our credit card that we use to pay our rent. Mm -hmm. um, they have an integration with them, which is nice, but otherwise you can buy either a yearly, monthly, or daily pass. I tend to use the daily pass um, when I know I'm for sure gonna buy flights. You basically go on, you put the route you want, and it'll show you, you can sort by the lowest amount of points needed, and it'll show you um, which credit cards you can use to get those flights with the points and where to transfer them to. It like breaks it down completely into little steps. And that's a really, really great way to find deals, I found. Uh, we do use points mainly for non-US Mexico flights, I'll put if we're gonna go to like Europe or World exactly. Cup or something. Um, and then we also like to use points for Hyatt. I think that they have probably the best redemption out there for hotel yep. reward points. And yeah, so we do use points to help out with things. Which place did one of you love and the other hate? This is a really hard question because I don't think there's a single place Martina and I hate. We kind of find the charm of every single place. Mm -hmm we go to and this is so terrible to say because we've just filmed so many videos around there and like we live right near here but San Francisco but it's not that there's anything wrong with San Francisco it's just for me I'm so used to it because I've lived near there my whole life but Martina is still very fascinated and yeah. likes to go there. It will be I think it will be the same yeah that um, the feeling that I have with Mexico yeah. City that is over there all the time and sometimes I have like uh, I have it that close that a lot of people they it's like oh yeah it's fascinating Mexico City it's like yeah it took like five hours just to cross the city yeah. it's like if we go to the next one is if you can have one superpower on your travels what would that be that was submitted by Royston one of our patreon members and all around cool guy to talk to I talk to him on Instagram sometimes uh, I have an answer okay that. yeah it will be uh, speaking every language in the world. I mean, that's not very useful over here in the US or in Mexico, but whenever I have an international tri uh, trip, oh my God, I wish I could uh, learn from the locals and speak Arabic or speak Italian or speak French or speak every dialect that it's not only 
whenever you go to France, it's not only about talking French, it's the dialect. I could talk every single language in the world so I can hear all those uh, conversations that the locals have and that, uh, that I can ask questions in order to know the culture a little bit better. That's a good one. For me, I think teleportation because I absolutely hate sitting on the airplane. <laughs> yes, like, I just, I just don't know what to do. I don't know what to do with my hands. What do I do? I just we, sit here. We already talked about like she's not <laughs> comfortable not doing just, nothing. I just I play these little games in my head of like, okay, so we have an hour left. That's like 20 minutes three times. Anyways, it'd be nice to teleport, so I have to go through those mental, <laughs> mental gymnastics. Okay, this one, we got two people asking very similar questions, uh, pretty much about, do you plan on traveling to other countries other than the USA and Mexico? Will we see more countries besides USA and Mexico? Yes, for sure. One thing that we really love about you guys is that even though we show like USA and Mexico as the majority of our channel, like you guys are always really open when we go and visit somewhere new, which is great because Although we love doing that because one of us is an expert in each country, it's really cool to throw yourself in an environment that like neither you nor I have any idea what's going on. I think that's why we loved um, World Cup and like Doha so much. Yeah, we were an expert and we always like to uh, check a different country, a different culture. Every year I think we are um, planning to do a big trip, you yeah. know, that is away from what we're used to, that is not in the US or Mexico, and we're just visiting a, a different place, yeah. and we already have planned the one this well, year. Well, you know, they might actually already have figured it out, because oh, really? this video is coming out after we've done our North Beach video in San Francisco, where we so subtly hinted to you guys. We are proud to announce that Martina and I are doing a whole series on Sicily but it's a Sicily not like what you've seen in The Godfather or The White Lotus. It's a Sicily that Martin lived in for four months. He has family there. Yeah. And we're going to be immersing ourselves with real Sicilians, learning their stories, sharing all sorts of travel yeah. guides. Most of the time whenever people visit Italy, it's about going to Firenze, Venezia, Milano, Torino, yeah. Roma. Not many people, they go to the south of Italy. Yeah. And if they're missing a lot. Yeah. Like in Sicily, it, yeah, it's not only like these mafia, godfather, whatever, no, no. It's charm, beautiful people, beautiful uh, uh, places yeah. that you have to discover. It's, we, it's amazing. We love an underdog, that's for sure. And so we have a, a very interesting spin to this whole series. We haven't gone there yet, but um, kind of drawing parallels to, you, you've mentioned so many parallels to Mexico and Sicily that I, I never would have thought of. Um, so anyway. We're excited to be filming that. Literally next week we're going to be traveling there. Um, but you guys aren't going to see it till January. But before then we have another really exciting series in the US that's kind of going to come out that I think you guys are going to love. Yes. So get excited. Next one, favorite type of trip? Do you like very touristy have, or having to explore? Uh, I have like a really shocking answer for this one. I don't think anyone sees this one coming even yet. Let me know. My favorite type of trip is group travel because we are so often like the the drivers of our own adventure that I love being in a group trip where it's like someone else is planning the itinerary. When I went to China, I just, I got to know the country so well because we had like this local guide that showed us things that I wouldn't have had access to. I think group travel is extremely underrated and it's a great way to meet people, especially if you're a solo traveler. But if not that, which like we haven't really done group travel, I was like, when I was in high school, I did that. Yeah. Um, I like uh, a good healthy mix of seeing the must-see sites mm -hmm. with also seeing, um, you know, more underrated local, yeah, a bit local stuff. Because, around. like I like to say, you wouldn't go to Paris and not see the Eiffel Tower, right? So, like, I think that's kind of what Tourist to Local is all about. I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit different and always I like to see what is not in the regular uh, plan and I like to explore a little bit more what's the real place you know like what the locals do what 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 is going on over there that is not oh, that, that that people they haven't discovered yeah, about the city. Uh, next one do you miss solo travel a little bit you know it's been a while yeah. for me since I've done a solo trip there's a lot of magic to be found in solo travel it really pushes you outside of your comfort zone 
and also you discover yourself yeah. like how you react in different situations and you just have to uh, discover the new place and have those feelings and thoughts in yourself like yeah. you have to keep it in your mind but what we love whenever we traveling together at least is to discover what the other uh, person discovers in the city like for instance I will have a different interpretation of Boston but then Juliana will have another one yeah. and then we can talk about it and we can tell our thoughts you know and it's like it's always amazing to discover what she sees yeah. what she sees on the city and um, I don't know that that yes I miss soul traveling it was very fun to do it but right now I'm having a lot of fun just traveling with Juliana yeah I agree I, I really like where we're at right now with with how we travel. I think solo travel is interesting because in some ways it's not as lonely as you think. You're always meeting people, but at the same time you're always having to say goodbye and make a friend for the day. And mm -hmm. There's this whole thing, there's, a whole, there's this documentary called A Map for Saturday. It's my favorite documentary in the oh, yeah, whole world it. that completely talks about the feelings of being a solo traveler. I think it nails it right on the head. That's right. Um, and I'm really glad I have you as my partner and we get to see things together. Best camera for trips? Miss you guys. Um, that was Hala Lima. Yeah, uh, best camera for trips, Sony A6400. Don't know if it's out already, I think it is, but we made a whole camera video. That's right. Hopefully we'll, we'll give you even more tips of how we make videos. And last one, how did your passion for Pumas start? My grandfather wasn't um, a Pumas fan. He was into Coyotas and Esa, that doesn't exist anymore. But uh, he knew he didn't want to be an America um, a fan. So my father went into the Pumas side and then uh, I was in my first Pumas game whenever I was almost two years old. But also he teach me about um, why Pumas is different. It's not only a, a football or a soccer team. It, it represented a little bit more. It represented being a bit against the, establish, the establishment that is the Mexican uh, football. And we are the only team I don't know if in the world, but at least in the Americas, that before it starts a game, we have our anthem and we have our own. It's not like la mio, la bao, like, no, no, no. We have our goya, so it's it's. We're very proud of who we are. We have the best uh, Mexican player in the entire history. We have the me best Mexican goalkeeper in the entire history. We're proud of our cantera. That is where we grow up, players. It's it's. There's no a team like us. Sorry, I'm, I'm getting too emotional, but that's like that's that's the way that that's how it uh, it was. I, I don't know if it's really carried over onto this channel. He's extremely uh, obsessed to the point that his uh, his soccer team he plays with here in town they call him El Puma because he's always wearing Pumas. Whenever we travel, he's wearing full Pumas pants and top and now suitcase. He found a Puma suitcase, and so. With that, that is the end of our question and answer for this round. That's right. But next week we're going to publish another one that is very interesting because that's about United States, Mexico, answers, travels, yeah, way comparison. of living, everything. Yeah. So that's yeah. going to be a good one. Yeah, exactly. So we hope you guys enjoyed this. It was a little different. I know maybe you got to know us better. Maybe you hate us now. Maybe you'll love us more. Uh, we don't uh, know. Let us know in the you, comments. Maybe we have a new Pumas fan. We'll maybe. See. Yeah, maybe we, maybe we indoctrinated them. I don't know. Um, all right. We'll see you guys in the next video. You know the drill so long. Travel well. And make the world your freaking neighborhood or else. That's a threat. <laughs> Bye. Bye.